There's two kinds of people, two kinds of men in this world. The haves and the have-nots. Those that have a woman, those that don't. <laughs> I figure there's 50% women, 50% men. Zods are looking pretty good for me. It's got to be easier to find a girl than a job. No guarantee I'm going to get a job. Well, 2010, at church, this girl named Anna Maria Orlando enters my life. What a name and what a person. There's a name with two cities in it. She's Sicilian, so I figured, man, she must be uh, in the Mafia or something. It must be a cover-up. And before meeting her, I was in Anna Maria Island on a vacation, on the beach, praying to God to give me a woman. <laughs> God, just give me a woman. And then I meet her, and her name is Anna Maria, and I think, oh, it's a sign. This must be the one. Two years later, though, it's over. I'm like, oh, what happened to a sign? She's like, oh! Have you been talking to God lately to see if we're supposed to be in a relationship together? I guess the whole beach scene didn't didn't cut it for her, so she dumped me. After a while getting over that, I was thinking about Christian girls. And Christian Mingle comes on the internet or comes on TV. <laughs> Find God's match for you. My coworker signs me up for it. <laughs> I guess I'm not done looking for Christian girls yet. I meet this beautiful girl named Elena, a Greek woman. Now, her and I get along great. We talk for like five hours in Dunedin, first date. On Valentine's, I blow her away with this awesome handmade card and box of chocolates, expensive dinner. And then, a month later, I get a call. A month into it. Bill, I woke up early. I was praying to God. <laughs> and I decided I want God to send me someone. I don't want to find them myself through a website. <laughs> she pulled her profile offline. And She's gone too. <laughs> Maybe Tam's crazy. I take a vacation in New York City for like a weekend, and I sign up for speed dating just to see what it's like up there. Jackpot. Meet this hot Russian girl. <laughs> and then about a month later, I move up there and work remotely for a month, and she shows me what a princess is like. Like my old Principe Sicilian girl, I wanted to be treated like a princess, but she didn't act like one. The Russian girl, she didn't even care if I held the door for her, but she acted like a princess. She had perfected the art of the leg cross, let me tell you. <laughs> now, there's one problem with her, though. She's Russian, she was divorced. My mind started wandering, thinking, oh, she probably married some guy to get to stay in America and then left them. That wasn't that attractive. And my boss was like, it's time to come back and work face to face, so back to Tampa I came. Now I wondered, what would it be like to live on a beach? So I went and actually lived on Anime Island for a couple months. Turns out to be kind of like a dry season, so I started a swimming group and discovered yoga. Now, all of a sudden, beautiful women everywhere wanted to talk to me for long periods of time. It was great, but they were too old. I was like a cub in cougar land. So I, I, I clawed my way out of there, got back to South Tampa, and then I was like, okay, I'm up here again. It's a little bit competitive though, everyone's taken. New Year's Eve, I find this one girl. She's digging me. She's got some nice facial hair, though. I figure I can do better. <laughs> Hold off on that. I'd recently joined improv, and there was a girl there named Kate, a real doll. I thought, okay, I'll test the scene. In improv, you do scenes, so I thought, okay, I'll do a little improv scene with her and ask her out and see where that goes. Totally rejects me. Every, every other scene I ever do, it's always like she manages to defuse it. So I'm like, okay, read you loud and clear. <laughs> then I go back and try OK Cupid. It's appropriately named because it's not Great Cupid, it's OK Cupid. <laughs> <laughs> that site has more flakes than a snow globe. I, I set up a date with this one girl at St. Pete. And the day of the date, she sends me this message saying, you know what, Bill, I found somebody else. I'm not going to do this. Hides her profile. Then, a couple days later, she pops back on and is like, oh, Bill, he wasn't the one. <laughs> I was like, OK. Uh, no reply. Then I start talking to this German girl named Heidi. And she can talk for hours on end on the phone. But whenever it comes time to actually meet, she gets nervous. I start thinking, man, are you going to start uh, asking me to send packages to Nigeria on behalf of you or something? <laughs> and then I meet a Mediterranean sounding name, and I have the Skype date, and I think, oh, this one's got to be real, right? I'm seeing face to face on the screen. But, I mean, who knows? You never know, it's the internet. So, basically, I can either sit around Tampa. Stare into this snow globe of OkCupid, 
view the flakes, watch them melt. Maybe I'll go back to the proverbial land of milk and honey, New York City. Maybe I'll sojourn through this wilderness of singlehood for 40 years and head back to Anna Marie Island at the end of it. I don't know. But what I do know is I have an Indian friend that just got married in India. And he's telling me about how much dowry money he is going to get <laughs> if he lets her marry him. And I'm thinking to myself, in America, the girl gets my money and I don't get the girl. What's the deal with that? Okay, Cupid, that's enough.